Hello and welcome to Solved or Unsolved, a true crime podcast. I'm your host, Brent. And if you would please go to our website at solvedorunsolved.com. There you can also follow me on social media. I really appreciate that. Today we are going to talk about a serial killer, Ronald Gene Simmons. Uh, Simmons, in a six-day period, killed 16 people, and 14 of them were his own family members. And now on to the podcast. This is the fifth episode of Solved or Unsolved. And today we're talking about serial killer Ronald Gene Simmons. Uh, this was back in December of 1987. This was in a small town in Arkansas, Russellville, Arkansas. I don't know about the population then, but now today there's about 25, 30,000 people that live in, in this small town. Well, it's December of 87, and the Russellville Police Department get a a call of a shooting at, a, at an attorney's office there in town. So the police get there, and a witness said a man walked in, pointed a gun, shot the lady behind the desk. Her name was Kathy Kendrick, turned around and walked out and left. That, that's all the police know at this time. Not really a good description. Uh, that's all they're going on. So they get there at the scene. And literally minutes after they get there, the police get another call for a second shooting. And this was at Taylor Oil Company. Uh, this is oh, not even a half a mile away in the same town. So they're working the scene at the attorney's office. So other police are responding to the second shooting at Taylor Oil Company. So they get there and they find the owner, Rusty Taylor, had been shot once. He was shot. He went down. I don't know if he acted like he was dead or if he was unconscious or what. And then um, an employee, J.D. Chaffin, heard the shot and opened the door and came into that room. Well, the shooter turned, looked at him, shot him once in the face, killed him. This man um, was killed. This fell right then. And then the shooter left. He just left. Um, so the police get to the second scene. Uh, they find Mr. Chaffin is, is deceased and Rusty Taylor is shot, but, but he survives. He, he, he's not um, um, mortally wounded. He, he survives. Moments after that, the police department get another call of a shooting not even a half a mile away at a convenience store. Now, you have to understand, this is a small town in Arkansas in 1987. They've already this day gotten two shooting calls back to back. Now they're getting a third shooting call, uh, not very far at all from where they are, at a convenience store. So they get there. Um, the person has been shot. It's the day manager at that store. A witness said a gentleman walked in, shot the guy, turned around and left. So we have three shooting scenes going on at the same time in this small town. Well, there's another shooting call, the fourth shooting call of the day. Now, all of these shootings, it's probably a mile and a half, not more than two miles away. They're all in, in this town. The fourth shooting is at a, it's called Woodland uh, Trucking Company. Um, there was a woman there that um, the shooter walked in um, her name was Miss Butts. He shot her, walked back into another office, and told the woman, call the police, tell them I'm going to turn myself in. So you've got four shootings in a very short distance, almost one right after another, it appear to be very, very random. And then you got the guy walking in and say, hey, call the police, holding a gun to her while he's doing it. Call the police, tell them I'm going to turn myself in. But he also says, I will only turn myself in to the chief of police. Don't think he knew him, but he wanted to turn himself in to the highest ranking law official 
in that town. So they get there. Actually, um, he told, asked the woman, said, what would the chief of police be wearing? Well, the woman that answered the phone call actually had seen the chief of police that day and, and remembered what he was wearing. Said he'll have on a blue sweater and a white shirt. So the chief of police walks up. Gentleman walks out, hands his twenty two revolver to him, and the man is placed under arrest. So the police have got the guy. He's turned himself in. There's been four shootings. At this point, they know there's two fatalities, Kathy Kendrick and J.D. Chaffin, and uh, um, three or four other people have been shot and are injured, but, but they do survive. So they get this gentleman down to the police station. He doesn't say anything. He won't tell them their name. He will not speak at all. So there was a little small station wagon that was seen at all of the four shootings, and, and it's at this um, trucking company uh, at, at the end where he turned himself in. So they're assuming, okay, this is the guy's vehicle. So they run the tags, and it comes back to Ronald Gene Simmons. So... All right, this is the guy that's done this. We, we've got Ronald Gene Simmons. But why? Why these four appear to be random shootings? What in the world has happened here? So they start doing their, their investigation, start trying to question him. He won't answer. He won't do anything. Well, what they do is they're saying, and I'll get back to this later in the podcast. I'll tell you there was a connection to each one of these shootings. But the police at this point, they, they've got Mr. Simmons, and he won't say anything. And they're thinking, okay, um, does this guy have a family? Where is he from? We need to go search his residence. We need to make sure everyone's okay. Well, Simmons lived in Dover, Arkansas. I think it's probably 15, 20 miles away. A really, really small place. So the Russellville Police Department and the Sheriff's Department get together, and they go to Dover, Arkansas and to Simmons's residence. So they get there and there's two or three cars there that with, with tags on it. And there's a bunch of old abandoned uh, cars on the on the side and in the back. There's junk everywhere. This is a really old house. Um, house had no running water, no plumbing, no central heat and air, anything like that. And all these cars here, the thing, well, someone's got to be here. So they go knock on the door. No answer at all. They're walking around the house looking, and there's one window that is open. I mean, um, not locked, but open. So they pull the window open, move back the curtain, and uh, look in and see dead bodies on the floor. So, of course, at this time, uh, they go and get a search warrant for the residents. They go in, and there there is just, uh, it's a bloody mess. It, it's... They find on the floor, as you walk in, in the living room, is a 23-year-old William Simmons, which is Simmons' son, and his wife, 21-year-old Renata. They're both laying in the living room, uh, obviously dead. Then they go into the kitchen where they find Simmons' 24-year-old daughter, Sheila, She is dead, and her husband, 33-year-old Dennis, is also dead in the dining room. And also, a 7-year-old Sylvia is found dead in the house also. Now, Sheila, Simmons' daughter, has a daughter, Sylvia. They're both dead in the house. Well, Ronald Simmons, Ronald Gene Simmons, had sex with Sheila, his daughter, and she had seven-year-old Sylvia. So Sylvia is actually the daughter also of Richard Gene Simmons. Now, this took place, um, no, no, well, it's happened in 1987. She's seven years old. So 79 or 80 out in Arizona where they lived in Arizona. Uh, Simmons was having sex with his daughter and She gave birth to a daughter. Um, Department of Child Services or whatever was getting a whiff of this and starting to check it out. Well, Simmons moved his whole family to Dover, Arkansas, 
And evidently, this was the 80s. They couldn't find him, so nothing was ever done about this. So we have five people dead in the house. Uh, we have two dead in Russellville that um, Simmons had committed. But they're wondering, what, where's his other family? It, where's his wife, his other son? He has four children. Where, where are these? Where are these people? So they start doing a search of the property and they find an area that has some like old tin laying on the ground they move it and you could tell where it was sort of freshly dug area Um, so they they start digging in this area and in this area they found seven bodies in this grave they said it was four to five feet deep they found the seven bodies Uh, Dirt was on top, and then a bunch of rocks, and then a bunch of bob wire, and then more dirt, more rocks, more bob wire, and more dirt. Um, Also, they had had uh, kerosene poured all over their bodies. Now, the only thing I can think of, the kerosene maybe to um, uh, stop the smell of decay, maybe the dirt rocks and the the bob wire especially, maybe to keep um, animals from getting into the grave. It's the only thing I can think of the reason he did it this way. So these, these bodies are just piled on top of each other, thrown in a hole. So that accounts for all but two more family members. There are two, um, actually we'll call them babies. Um, both of them are like 20 months old. Um, it was uh, Rita and William's uh, son, they couldn't find, and um, there was a 21-month-old Michael that they couldn't find either. Well, there were two old abandoned cars, and they looked in the trunks, and in each vehicle was a garbage bag, and they opened up the garbage bag, and that's where the two um, babies were found uh, deceased, of course. So we've got a total of 16 people that have been killed and 14 of these people are Ronald Gene Simmons' family members. So let's go back and let's sort of piece this together of what happened when and sort of how it happened. And the only reason we know this is through the crime scene investigations because Simmons never, ever said a word about any of this, ever. So on December 22nd of 1987, um, Simmons' three children are school age, so they all go to head off to school that morning. And it, it's the last day before Christmas break. So that morning, Simmons walks into his bedroom and shoots and kills his wife, Becky, with a twenty two revolver. All of the killings he did were with twenty two revolvers. He had two of them. He then walked into his son's room, Ronald Gene Simmons Jr., and shot him a couple of times, once in the head, once in the chest, killing him. He then strangled to death the three-year-old granddaughter, Barbara, which was uh, Ronald Simmons Jr.'s um, daughter. So he has killed these three people, and they're laying where he killed them. Well, later that same day, his four children uh, came home from school. So Simmons goes out and meets them in the yard. They're, they just got out for Christmas break, so they're, they're excited about that. And he stops them and says, hey, I have um, some surprises for you in the house, but I want to show you one at a time. So he started with the oldest um, daughter, 17-year-old Loretta, takes her in, takes her into the bedroom, and strangles her to death with a cord. He then brings the other three children in one at a time. Edie, Marion, and Becky brings them in one at a time and strangles all th- all three of them. So he strangled all four of his children. A couple of them he actually had in the house were 55-gallon barrels of water. That's why they kept water because they didn't have any running water. Um, a couple of them he also put in the barrels and um, drowned, drowned his own children. So this is December the 22nd. Simmons killed his wife, five of his children, and his grandchild. And days before that, they had an outhouse because they did not have um, plumbing. 
uh, where you have to dig the hole and you ever so often, I don't know, a year or so, or whatever, you have to move the outhouse because it fills up. Well, days before this, Simmons had his children um, out with shovels and picks digging this big, giant, four or five foot deep hole that they think they're digging for to move the new outhouse to it. Well, it turns out they were digging their own grave. Had no idea. So Simmons takes all of these people, the five children, his wife and his granddaughter, and throws them in the hole and puts the bob wire in the dirt, as I explained a minute ago. Now, three days later, December the 26th, day after Christmas, the older Simmons children had been invited to the Simmons home for an after Christmas dinner, I guess you would call it. And you have to remember this is 1987. There's no cell phones. Actually, they did not even have a home phone in their home. So there wasn't any, um, how's mom doing? Um, we'll be there at four o'clock. None of that. There's no communication back like it used to be. And all indication was that 23-year-old William Simmons and 21-year-old Ren- Renita Simmons had gotten there first. They, they were the first ones to get there, and they had a 20-month-old son. Uh, all indications are that his daughter, Renata, went into the house first, and Simmons shot her twice with the 22 caliber. Uh, William Simmons runs into the house. All indications are as soon as he walked in, Simmons shot him once in the back of the head. And he fell dead. Um, the, the child, the 20 month old child was drowned in, in one of the um, rain barrels and, and we found and they found him in the trunk of the car. So we got these people dead in the house and the next to arrive were Simmons' 24 year old daughter Sheila. Now remember Sheila is the one that he had a child with that's his own daughter and it was her husband Dennis McNulty. So and, and Sylvia is there of course now, it was real hard to tell who was shot first through crime scene and evidence, but they, uh, Sylvia and her husband, Dennis, were shot numerous times, and the seven-year-old Sylvia was also shot. Um, they, they, so you have three, four, five, five people that are dead in this house. Remember the little baby? He's already put it in the trunk. The, the two children are in the trunk. There's five people dead in this house, his own family members. Now, he covered each one of them up with their own jacket and some bedding. So he's got them covered. So the next thing he does, the shootings in Russellville are December the 28th. So he's in this house from de- December the 26th when he murdered these people until December the 28th. He's two days in there. All indication was... He just sat around, drank beer, ate food, and watched TV with people laying there dead in his house. Um, He did anything that he ate. He did put in bags and seal up. Uh, Only thing to tell of that is so animals wouldn't smell it and wouldn't get in the house and get to the bodies. Um, It's the only thing that can be determined of why he did that because he didn't appear to be a very tidy person. So thinking that's the reason that he tied the food up so animals wouldn't smell it. So December the 28th, Simmons drives, it's probably 15 miles, to Russellville, Arkansas. It's where we have the first shooting was at the um, attorney's office where he shot and killed Kathy Kendrick. Well, there is a rhyme and reason to the reason he went there and and shot her. Um, It was later found that uh, Simmons was infatuated with her. Um, he would send her flowers. Um, she said sometimes she would go out getting ready to go to work and walk out, and he'd be just standing on her porch, really freaking her out. He was really after her, and she turned him down. She said, this is creepy. I don't want to have anything to do with you. She totally turned him down, and it's later found out that that's the reason that he killed her, because uh, he was turned down by her. Uh, something we need to understand about Simmons, he was very, very power hungry, always had to be in control, very dominating, controlled his entire family. They could not do anything unless they had permission from him. Uh, It was later found out that 
uh, his wife Becky had written a letter to her sister stating that she was going to leave Simmons, was tired of this and was going to leave and take the children. Many people believe that this is what pushed him over the edge. This is what made him just totally lose it and kill 16 people. Now, remember, at this point, he's already killed his entire family, 14 people. And then he goes and shoots and kills Kathy Kendrick, a woman that he was infatuated with, but it turned him down. So everything I've read into it is he's killed his entire family. He's just going to go, anyone that did him wrong, he's going to kill them. He just, he's done. He's done with everything. So he goes to the second place in Russellville, the Taylor Oil Company, and he shot and killed J.D. Chaffin. Now, Chaffin was a volunteer fireman, and he worked there uh, part-time driving one of the trucks. He was an innocent bystander in this. He heard the shot where Simmons shot Rusty Taylor. J.D. Chaffin walked in the room and was just shot. Wrong place, wrong time. There was no reason. But now the reason he went after Rusty Taylor is Taylor owned the convenient market where Simmons had worked, his the, the second, I mean the third shooting spot. So that's the reason he went after Taylor. Now the convenient market, he shot the day manager, but but they lived. Everything can be told is that he shot the day manager is because when he worked there, he was a night manager, but he wanted the day job. So he didn't like them. So he went in there and shot them. Now, the fourth shooting was at the trucking company. And uh, it was a Miss Butts that she lived. Um, she was Simmons's supervisor when he worked there. And everything that anyone could gather from Simmons... He was not going to listen, listen to a woman for any reason. He absolutely hated that he had a female supervisor that told him what to do. He couldn't stand it. That's the reason the final place where he went um, at the fourth shooting was at the um, trucking company. So all four of the shootings were places where people were that Simmons felt like had wronged him. You know, this is one of those cases that just sounds crazy and that you've probably never heard of. I know at one time, um, this was the most family members ever killed by one person in the United States. I don't know if that still holds true today, but he, Simmons, everything that can be determined is that he found out that his wife was going to leave him and take his children and he had to be in control of everything. Actually, talking to people that lived in the small town said he was very, very quiet. No one really knew him. He was impossible to talk to or get to get to know. He had to be in total control of everything. And I guess by him seeing this letter or, or finding out that, that she was going to leave, just put him over the edge. He, he, he just totally lost it. Um, Simmons did go to trial. Um, he never said anything, never did anything. They said when he was in his cell, he would just lay on his bunk with his face to the wall, never said anything to anyone. Um, He was sentenced to death, and in June of 1990, uh, did die of lethal injection. I want to thank you for listening to the podcast. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, um, listen to the other episodes, and please tell your family and friends to listen. Uh, If you're listening on iTunes, please subscribe to my channel. Leave me a positive review. That would really help me back on Stitcher, the same thing. Um, And also, uh, go to my website, Solved or Unsolved. Um, You can follow me there on social media. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you very much for listening to the podcast.